In this episode, we'll look at data entry and I'll show you some important tips and shortcuts that everyone using Excel should learn. Here we have a to-do list which is preparing the next keynote presentation. Um, let's say John's going to do this, so uh, let's allocate all of these tasks to John and his colleague Jess and his colleague David. So what we'll do here, I'll start off here and what I want to show you is the use of the tab key to move right and the use of the enter key to move back. So I'll type in John, uh, let's say March 28th, 2012, status is done and I press enter there. So notice what I do is I type the name, I press tab, type the date and press tab and then type done and press enter. That will bring me to the next row. Now I'm going to say that this third task is exactly the same as above. So what I'll do is I'll select these cells and I'll use the keyboard shortcut Control D which is going to fill from above. Watch what happens. So all of these items were copied from above. So that's helpful if you've got two rows that are the same. Uh, now let's say Jess is going to help to prepare the keynote outline and her due date here is 4th April 2012. Uh, let's say that's 90% done. Now if I want to type Jess in quickly, watch what happens if I type J and E. Excel offers to autocomplete this. All I need to do is type tab and it fills in Jess for me. So let's say here April 11th 2012 and this is 50% done. I press enter. Let's fill Jess in again. So Jess tab uh, April 11th 2012 and I'll do a control D to fill from above because it's 50% here as well. Press enter. Now let's say I wanted to select John. Another way to do that instead of typing J-O and asking Excel to autocomplete, I could press and hold the Alt key and then press the down arrow. So the Alt key and down arrow brings up uh, options as to to what you want to fill in. In this case, rehearsing the presentation is John's job because he's going to give it. And I'll press Tab. Um, April 25th. That's 0% complete. Press Enter. Give the presentation. I'll press Alt down. Press Enter for John. Tab. April 27th. 2012, 0% uh, and then collecting the feedback from the questionnaire that's David, so I type David in, press tab April 30th, 2012, 0% so that's the use of the tab key which moves you across to the right like this and then the enter key which moves you to the next row and that combination is very useful when you've got lots of rows of data to enter manually. Okay, let's say it's now David's turn. Let's, the, let's say the keynote presentation is finished and it's David's turn to collect all this, uh, all the feedback from the questionnaires. He's got a whole bunch, a whole stack of paper questionnaires filled in by, let's say, a hundred people. And they're all this format. There's five statements and the um, respondent was asked to say whether they strongly disagree were neutral about or strongly agreed with each of these statements. So let's say you just started out with the first respondent who's Andrew and he's filled in those first five questions with the answers so someone else can maybe analyze them. Um, and he's on to Betty and he's thinking oh my goodness I've got 99 of these left to do so how can I make this a bit faster? Well one way would, would be to say I've got five questions I know I have to fill this name in five times rather than type it out five times I can select five cells type in Betty and then here I press control enter and that fills that name in all cells then I can go on and enter uh, question three let's say that was B question four which was D question 5 which was E and we can go back and forward uh, what what you'd probably have to do is go back and forward up and down between the piece of paper and the screen and check uh, what he's doing so start by checking 
oh look we've got the wrong name so you know what we could do is instead of um, typing in Brittany five times again we just select those five cells type Brittany once press control enter and that fills it out something that we could do though to stop us from making mistakes is to use a tool that I don't think many of you would have seen uh, it's called speak on enter so let me activate it listen to this cells will now be spoken on enter right and now what I'm going to do is continue with the next uh, survey sorry the next questionnaire who, which comes from Charlie let's try Charlie and press control enter Charlie. see it tells me Charlie is what I entered question one, one. I can now just type away without C. looking at the keyboard two Deep. So if I had a piece of Three. paper next to me, Deep. I'd know I'm typing the Four. right thing. C. Five. E. So how do you get to this feature, the speak on enter? Uh, let me just first turn it off. Turn off speak on enter. Uh, remove it from the quick access toolbar. What I'm going to show you is how to get it onto the t quick access toolbar because it's not part of the standard 2010 or 2007 ribbon. Uh, what you do is click here to customize with more commands. Uh, I would like to choose from commands not in the ribbon. Go down here, press S to move forward down to the S's and look for uh, speak cells on enter. Speak cells is there, speak cells on enter. I press add and that will add a new button to the quick access toolbar. Which I can turn on like this. Cells will now be spoken on enter. And turn off like turn that. Turn off speak on enter. Now, uh, if you're in an office and you're using this, uh, you might want to put headphones on so you don't disturb everyone else. Just a quick tip. Now, let me show you the data form in Excel, which is an old feature and it's not in the ribbon again, but it could be handy if you if it's what uh, you need. What I'll do is bring it up first. So, press Alt D. O, and you see this little data entry form uh, it knows that I've got a table of data so across the top are the headings that go down here and then each of these lines is a new record and what I can do is scroll up and down using the slider to say this record 920 and it shows each of the records for that uh, all the data for that record then I can scroll all the way to the bottom um, to record 2000 and this could be handy if you're working with lots of data so you can use keyboard shortcuts such as control up arrow to bring you to the first or control down arrow to bring you to the end and you can use the up arrow to move you up and the down arrow to move you down if you want to move between these fields then you need to use the tab key so tab 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 and shift tab to move back so shift tab shift tab shift tab another thing you might be able to do is use um, the enter key to move to the next record so I'm at record 11 if I want to move to record 12 I press enter and move to 13 by pressing enter and 14 again by pressing enter and I can move backwards by pressing shift enter shift enter shift enter shift enter so that's a data entry form, you can play with it if you want to. To get to it, um, I use the shortcut Alt D O, but you can also put it on the um, quick access toolbar by saying more commands, choose commands from commands not in the ribbon, click here, now press F for form, uh, we'll see F form, add that, and there you have the data entry form button. What you need to do is first select the data table where you've got your data, then go up to form, press that, and it will bring up your data entry form for you to use. Right, one very useful thing to do when you're entering lots of data or working with a big table of data in Excel is to freeze the header row so you can see it when you scroll down. So what I've got here is a table of 2,000 rows. What I've done is it frozen it between row 3 and row 4 which means as I scroll down the header row here in blue stays visible which means I can see what each of the column represents. To do that I go into the view menu and click on freeze panes. 
So here I've unfrozen the panes. As I scroll down you'll see I lose the header row. But if I select A4 and click on freeze panes, freeze panes, it shows me the header row and in fact uh, rows 1 to 3 are frozen. You can do that another way instead of freezing the panes you can split the window so if I go up here and click on split you'll see there's a grey bar that's been added as I scroll downwards you see the top three rows remain frozen the difference with this is that you've got more flexibility you can actually change the way it's split and drag up and down and actually look at two different parts of the screen at the same time or you could say split screen here and if you do that you're given this crosshair that you can uh, drag around you can freeze just this bit uh, or change the the area you're looking at by scrolling up and down so the split pane feature gives you a bit more flexibility but most of the time I find freeze panes is good enough okay so now one last tip on how you could keep your row headers in view when scrolling down use an Excel table now this is a new feature in Excel 2007 and 2010 what you do is go into your data table uh, click on insert table it will ask you for the range say OK and you'll notice that it has changed the formatting and it's added these filters and uh, what, what a table in Excel allows you to do is gives you lots of power over sorting filtering and formatting so for example I can choose one of these table styles and you can see it dynamically changing as I scroll over, roll over my uh, different styles. I might quite fancy this one so I'll go with this and you can also add a total row really easy so it's just done that if I deselect it it gets rid of it automatically. Uh, instead of banded rows I could use banded columns so um, something like this and instead of banded, I can switch back from banded columns to banded rows but the thing I was going to show you is that when you select a cell inside the table and scroll down you'll notice that the column names A, B, C and D are replaced by ID, sales date, salesperson etc. So as you can keep scrolling down you'll see what each of these columns means without having to freeze panes or split the window and that's a very handy thing to do as well. So I hope you've enjoyed these tips and I look forward to seeing you soon. Alright, bye.